pretty impressive with battery. Uh, That's something we're, we're looking to go to. Battery? Yeah. We don't, we don't have that. This is uh, the um, biomatic. It's been nice enough to do that. What you got to realize with uh, the hydraulic ones, they're connected to the truck. So if you're going from the cutters to the spreaders, you got to shut the valves off up there, release the pressure down here, disconnect, and then reconnect. And then someone's got to be in that truck all the time. They have to. So the same same right, but can you run those things? I mean, what, what do you do? You have to have that vehicle to run those. No. You can run those on any fire. No, no, no. Really? You have them on the ladder as well. You need the hydraulic ones. What about an engine? They have time. They can't. So if he's a, if you go to a scene, and he's there first. Yep. And he need it. He, he can't. Yeah, the charge. Yeah, the charge. But now. he could run a battery one. Yeah. Right. Put a battery one in the back of the car. Yeah. Exactly. Very expensive. How much? You know, we need like forty thousand dollars for all set up. To, to, to totally one. convert? Oh, for one. For one. For one. Each. For one truck. One set. One set. One set. One set. See, right now we have jaws on ladder one, ladder two, and the heavy rescue. Now ladder two is a reserve. Would it make sense to have to to uh, leave those as it is for now, and as part of the conversion, start to spread them out on more vehicles, or that doesn't really buy you much. In other words, the ladder one, ladder two, and this thing's always at the scene anyway. If you, if you wouldn't have the yeah, main power. Have the main power. So if an engine ice company ice. pulled up, and the car was on fire, have it on our ladder. their concentration first is to put the car fire out. We'll take care of the patient. I'll we'll take care of the patient, and then... But who goes to a car accident where you're going to use this thing? car accident, ladder. you're going to have the rescue, and the deputy, and engine company, and the ladder, because the ladder carries all the... Uh, He's got the we're the wrecking tools. We're the wrecking tools. We're the ones that tear apart the vehicle to get in. Everybody has their own job, and it's all pre-laid out. No, what I was trying to get at was, is the battery thing give you flexibility to spread it across more vehicles? That's really not the big thing. It's no, just no. The manpower is the big thing. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's to be able to have more manpower. and more You'll see. We could jump off the ladder with those and go right to the car. Without, without getting all set up and leaving a guy at the truck now because he's got a... Usually I'm the driver of the ladder, so I would stay with the ladder truck. So when they have to change, like this and that, the jaws from the hydraulic system, I can shut the valve off. They can leave the pressure at their end, switch the tool that they want, you know, and then I have to be there to turn it back on. We've got two hooked up. We've got two lines on the, on the new ladder. We've got two lines, right? So we've got the jaws and the spreaders hooked up at all times. At all times. But if you wanted to switch, we have a ram that we can spread things apart. Uh, you would have to switch one of those. Over. Right. How are you Hi. doing? This is Tom. Goofy from Firematic. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. We get a lot of our a lot of our equipment, equipment from him. He's been nice enough to uh, bring down his battery operated stuff so we can. They're our number one vendor for life saving. Yeah. I'm also a uh, firefighter in Lancaster. I'm like in the business as opposed to just being in sales. What's up, man? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks right, for coming. Guys. We've got, right now, we've got, we're going to work on the white car. Okay, we've got car accidents. We're going to pretend that somebody's in it. The junkyard stripped all the seats up. We had to go down and get a seat to put the patient in. This one, what we're going to do is, uh, first thing you're going to do as you're approaching the scene, you're in a vehicle and make sure that there's uh, no wires across it, there's no fluids leaking on it, gasoline, antifreeze, oil, or anything like that. That's always, almost always the case, though, isn't it? Some right, so we have to mitigate that when we right. get in. So, so that's one of the, thing. if wires are across it, you do nothing, you call back the fire alarm, say we need mass left down here, we have power lines across the vehicle. You're not going to go to the up. vehicle. The patient's got to stay in there. If they try and get out, they're going to yeah. get a lot of food. They're not go grounded, so essentially they're yeah. safe. But if we contact the vehicle, we can keep that circuit. We're going to fry. Usually the 
power lines are what, about 13,000 volts, I think, coming through them. So, you're not going to survive. Okay? So you're going to, let's say you, well, you're going to pull up, you size it up, there's no power lines, no fluids, anything. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab the ribbing, and you're going to stabilize the vehicle. See? It doesn't take off. Right? The car accident. 99.9% .9 of the time, the vehicle is still in gear and it's running. So you're going to chalk the wheels. You're going to chalk the wheels to make sure that the car doesn't take off on you unexpectedly, okay? Usually somebody, we all know, we all have, everybody that's on the trucks and the, the ladder, the residence, they all know what they have to do. We've done this hundreds of times. Someone's going to be going over there trying to pry the hood open or get it open and cut the battery wire. Okay, that's one of the. Make sure the patient's stabilized. Cut the battery wires because it takes about three minutes to totally discharge the capacitors inside the airbags. So while everybody else is grabbing, cribbing the jaws, getting set up, making sure the patient's all. All right, and all set. That's discharging. We're, we're gonna, uh, and then you, LFD. then it, yeah, then it, then everybody, you know, gonna say we're, we're gonna take this side of the car off the doors to get out to the patient. So, what, is first aid being applied to the patient after right. the, after the car? As soon as we know the car is stabilized and safe, you say first. We, we'll, we'll have somebody. We'll have one of the ambulance guys in the, in the yes. car. With Hold Somebody will scroll through the window, do a quick assessment, trauma assessment, everything else, find out what we're dealing with. Yeah, I got secondary entrapment, his foot's tough, you know, under the pedal. Um, what do we have to do? And he initially starts to get vitals and start to do patient care inside the car. Everybody else's job is to take that car and remove it from around the pole. Once, once the uh, guy inside the car puts traction on that neck, he don't let go. His hands are on that guy's head. Huh? Really? Yeah. Oh, he stays yeah. there always with it. Yeah. And he's the boss. he shifts his body and he's talking to the patient all the time. He's telling him what we're going to be doing each step of the way. If we're going to break glass, we're going to cover him with a sheet or a blanket. So, I, you know, he's not saying, am I dying? You know? No, you're going to tell him. You're going to hear a loud noise. You're going to get the glass breaking. You're going to feel it against the blanket. You know, he, he gives him the update as, as we're going along. You're going to hear some, we're cutting the door off, you're going to hear some noises, you're going to hear some, some creaks, you know. Uh, Let him know each, each step of the way what the, what's yeah. going on around him. So he doesn't panic. There's a thousand things in the vehicle to be knowledgeable about. Where could airbags deploy? Where are the electrical sources? What's going to move when he pops the door down here? Do I need to get myself and the victim clear first? Up to 13. There's uh, in, in today's vehicles, um, based on the fact that VW and Audi came out with a couple in the last year and Ford came with a center bag, there could be 16 airbags in any of 18 different positions domestically. They're under the dash now, they're in the seat, they're center console, Knee side bags, curtain, floor yeah. bags, believe it or not. This is what we're worried about as firefighters is this yellow loom. Yellow loom to us is airbags. If there's an orange uh, cable, that's high voltage, that means it's a hybrid. So when we stay away from this, and we stay away from the orange cable. Because the hybrids can have up to 150,000 volts running through that cable. And that's one of our things too, is we, we cut the battery, the regular battery, the 12 volt battery on the car. If it's a hybrid, we try and get to the battery pack, usually in the trunk, and we pull the main. Is there any sort of... Uh, uh, Yes, sir. Is there anything that may happen? Like, yes. Well, there, there's generally, there's, you know, 40 plus different hybrids out there right now. Next year it'll be 60. Yeah. Okay. And if you were to look at, for instance, a 2012 version of Camry gas versus 2012 Camry hybrid, yeah. they're in the exact same package. Right. So we don't know that there's a hybrid there, especially if the trunk's oh, gone at 3 in the morning. Right. Outside, so. so what we have as firefighters are procedures that we follow. So our SOGs on a daily basis mean we show up, we chalk the vehicle. Because when a hybrid is sitting in neutral, or when it's sitting in a red light, what's it sound like? Nothing. It's like a golf cart. So we chalk the wheels. That takes us to step one. Two, the person that scrolls in does two things with that car. First is, and the second will be what? The 
ignition, turn it off in one form or fashion. So by turning it off, believe it or not, on the hybrids and all electrics, it takes the power that's in those cables, sucks it right to the battery in the back, whether it's a nickel metal hydride or a lithium. So when it sucks it back, we're a little bit safer. And then what we got to do from then on is find a 12 volt, because a lot of people don't realize even those battery power cars have 12 volts. So to answer your question, if we follow our general procedures, we're safe in those vehicles. But if we sit there and we try and learn 40 different vehicles and how to power them down appropriately, by next year we've got 20 more to learn and the other ones have been revamped. There should be some sort of indicator when you go right up that's really obvious, but you start cutting through that thing, the cable, through the rocker. Yes, sir. The first thing you do is when you start to, before you make a cut, if you're going to expose, you're going to make a cut like on a pillow or something like that, you have to have somebody inside and open it up. Yeah, strip all that we stuff gotta, out of there we gotta, so you can see we if it's pull Yep, it comes we out gotta, really We got to open that up because inside you can have seatbelt pretensioners, which are gas-filled cylinders. That's like a bomb. So you don't, you okay. We have to strip stuff out. You don't do it on your own car, so you don't know how easy it comes out. Right. But it does. It pops right out. So that's what we do. So we stick to that procedure and we're safe. And believe it or not, all of the newer hybrids and electrics, if they have an SRS deployment, they automatically power themselves down. So we're not worried about cutting a big orange cable anymore or anything like that, but we need to know every time we're going, it could be a hybrid, man. It's like, holy cow. And you just can't tell batteries are hidden everywhere. Right. Trunk, under the back seat, yep. in fenders, under the wheel well. We don't know where we're going to be searching. It is. Yep. We're searching for the, the low power, basically, uh, hybrid, the 12 volt. You dig around. That's why we disconnect the batteries, because if an airbag didn't deploy, you know, we, we disconnect the battery, but it takes, you know, two to three or four minutes for the capacitor inside that airbag to, to energize down. So, so our biggest initiative is to cut that 12 volt. Yes. Cut that 12 volt right away, because then that, Every that the process clock. of the electricity is starting to dissipate, and it'll be safe somewhat if the airbag didn't go off. Now, you guys get to hear the airbag go off, right? Yeah. 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 Imagine that in your face right here. <laughs> well, think about it too. Now, here's the idea. The airbag, and it works with pretensioners. The airbag is actually designed to slow you down. It's not designed to stop you cold. It's got a vent on the side. So your frontal bag, there's 10 inches of bag that comes out that slows you from 65 miles an hour, or if it's a head-on 130, to zero in 10 inches. So the stuff that's in there is powerful. Back in the day, it was sodium azide, which was used in rocket fuel. Now there's 20 different chemicals and 20 different chemicals. It comes out about 200 miles an hour, and it meets you in the face. So usually, if somebody was belted correctly and the car did the job, the majority of the injuries we find in these vehicles are minor traumas because of airbags. Energy, uh, abrasions on their face. Abrasions, scratches, like, 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 like a, a, a road burn. Mm -hmm. Correct. The leg, well, I'll put the leg underneath. Like a lot of these, you guys get a lot of broken legs underneath it. Yes. Correct, yep. That's what we call a secondary entrapment. So a primary, and we get on scene, one of the guys will call up, hey, I got primary entrapment, which means I can't open the door and get you out. Secondary entrapment is when somebody scrolls through the window and starts to look at them, well, I've got them trapped under the dash a wee bit. So in other words, there's a frontal impact that push the dash down on their knees, and we have to do what we call a dash displacement or dash roll, and get the dash and the steering column and everything else off of that person so that we can free their legs. Car's better now. What's that? Well, uh, safer, crush, safer. Crushing, yes. Let me, they don't. Safer cars. Let me the engine's not in the driver's seat anymore. Right. Right. Every vehicle you see in a commercial on TV, the biggest thing they always highlight is five-star safety. So all the materials are more available and more price friendly to people now, but it's counterintuitive. It's harder for us to get them out. They roll over. Yes, sir. They roll over. Well, you also got to realize when there's a rollover, and you're approaching the let's say it's sitting up like this. When when you approach it, you got to look under the vehicle. How many patients? How many people were in that vehicle? Did it land on somebody? There was a child so underneath out, that was walking down the street. And then, you know, if somebody walked it, it rolled over, hit him, and it landed on him. And it could be on its side. Yep. Um, Ready? Yeah, just the last thing I wanted to mention. Uh, the to mention. One of the initiatives that we're working on here in the city right now is to upgrade the current cache of equipment that we have. Yeah. So the draws for years and years, as you can see, are a set of draws over there. The draws are the spreaders, the ones that open. Okay. They're tethered to the truck by a hydraulic hose that runs off the pump on the apparatus. So part of what we're trying to do right now is take that current cache of equipment, replace it with more powerful equipment that is completely portable and stronger. So if now you can imagine I'm over an embankment, I'm down in a field, I'm somewhere else where I can't get the apparatus close because everybody and their mother parked right on top of it. 
and be a completely independent uh, the the system mid-30s to set up a truck. Mid set up a truck. Yeah. But it's completely portable, yeah. and if power supplies dissipate and you use up your batteries, you can actually plug it into a 110 extension cord. Yeah. 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 Generator and reel. The ladder on the heavy metal. It will run 110 on the truck? Yes, sir. Endlessly. So if you go pull out the battery, you have an adapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes with it, correct. So imagine if you had man and machine here, somebody that got pulled into a piece of equipment. You now don't have to bring a truck or a gas-powered unit in to try and feed them with the jaws. Because they're not just for cars. They're for everything else. They're for rent. When you have a firefighter in a building. So if you've got a guy that's in a basement collapse and needs to be extricated, and you need to use some heavy lift capabilities, you can use these in oxygen void environments because you don't need a gasoline motor.
not going. She's not trying to get right I'm up. I'm going to say, get the heck out of my way. <laughs> you can chalk the other side too. Uh, what you would do, okay, Jake, is the airbag, leave it lifted up enough for the jaw. Try to clear the vehicle up enough to get another set in there. All right now. That's why you chalk the wheels. Once you lift it, you can a couple more open. And actually, so if you, you want, just want, just want, you just want, 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 want to try to protect the support of this so it thing collapses down. Right. It's open. So you may go to the big one, it's all much more to do.
that's a big shock factor, right? Uh, you don't, we're not replacing that this year, but we're, we're going to go, we're going to add a portable cutter so we don't have to change it. You've got a phased approach to the upgrade. Yeah. You never get to fix all of it. Right, right. Gotta, Absolutely. You've got to chip away. Yeah. Oh, that's our goal. That's, that's our a, goal. That's a, good, that's a very good, strong story. You've got a guy running the cutter. We're going to work on that. In the meantime, we've got the draw as a portable draw.
have our EMS guys inside. Head to the Stabilize the patient. Yeah, back class over here. All right, yeah, we're gonna move it. Well, I just want to move them. We already see it. 
right, yeah, so then why don't we... All right, you guys already seen my airbag glass, yeah. right? Yeah, we thought I heard it. You heard yeah. it? Right. Yeah, have some, you right. can press down a little bit, have some water then. Yeah, rehydrate. Yeah. Grab the water, cool down.
Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 Now, the most of us are at the bottom, we're going to pull them straight back. And grab the top, and pull them straight back. Put your palm over and suck in. Yeah, yeah. and now you have nothing in the pockets of you. I have tools, and gloves, a radio, and a flashlight, and it just adds more. Yeah, yeah. 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 we wait on some turns the third one. We're all set. And now, once you get to it, you put on this up, and it's also the turn. See, it's got to turn over. Yeah, same as the front. You find there, you can turn it all out of turn. You can just put us up on the click in. And all you can do is see if the lights are all going to be too high. Not on you. Do we have any responsible This is crazy. Most of the bigger trucks can't go through the ladder. They're all in the seat. So when you're sitting in the seat and driving, basically all you have to do is put the strap on the side. Big one hour in the seat. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Uh, no. no. Just fill in. Boom. On we go. The one thing we like to do is we, we don't like to flow water until we see more. Yeah. Right? You see, you know, we, don't, we don't put the water on smoke. Yeah. So we, we would keep going until we start. And you would know. You're going to feel it. It's going to get warm. You know, it would be very hot. You'd be like, where is it? Today it won't. Today it won't. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Alright, uh, so anyone going air? Anyone going air? Okay. Okay. Alright, so go up and uh, do a left hand search. Keep your left hand on the wall. Yeah. You're going to the left. Well, somehow I don't think I can take pictures in there. Yeah. Good guy, Yeah. Let's get infrared. Yes, that's you and your partner. 
That's so it. Don't want to leave somebody behind the door up there. Right. You're basically leaving holes in there, turning around. Even though I got 10 minutes, you're basically saying, yeah, I'm out of here. Or I didn't have 10 minutes, and you got a few minutes, right? Yeah. A 30 minute ball over my last year. Really? And you come on, you grab another one, do it again. It's part of it, too. And there's How different you? techniques on training, like at the academy. Yeah. And then when the first yeah. week we were there, yeah. we were zapping yeah. off pretty quick. Yeah. It's but once you start kind of getting used to it, you well, get to control and bring it up. I've done diving, I'm saying yeah. I did that same thing. Oh, the first time I went diving, yeah. I was literally throwing it up. It's going crazy. Look, you got 70% built up. You got the ability to pitch everywhere. I don't know if that goes. Does he get to work? But I'm like the first one to have to walk because I had burned up all my eyes. You can act like an idiot. So I'm sitting on the floor. And there is everybody, and they're all down there. Did you want to go stand and try to look with this thing? Sure. Oh, yeah. Want to put a coat and stuff on it? No, no, no. You're good. You're good. You guys want to focus? I was watching that upstairs earlier. Wait, oh, there's something. It's still a little foggy in here, so. Get about, uh, five minutes. Yeah, we can't see anything on here. We see walls. Yeah, we lost a lot of water. Oh, there you go. Nope, you can see a body. Yep. Then the hose line's still on the floor, just be careful. Yep. Yeah. But even with the lights on, Yes. You're not seeing anybody yeah. over there. Wow, that is cool. I can see you now. Yep. What are you guys, sleeping on the job? Come on. <laughs> that is very cool. You didn't rescue him. You left him in the uh, yeah. <laughs> One deceiving even, feature with that, if you turn around and look at the glass, you see your, your reflection. Oh, right. yeah. Oh. It's me and it's you. That is. So, <laughs> what is that? Just clear it's glass? Just yeah. Clear Maybe glass. Glass mirror or reflective surface. Good. So like a yeah. dance studio might be a tough time with a wall full of mirrors. Yeah. Okay, you start thinking there's a lot of five feathers in there with the imaging cameras. Yeah, waving. <laughs> Look at that, you can see the studs on the wall. Oh yeah. yeah. Wiring will show up a little oh. better. <laughs> and with these newer ones, if you hit 300 degrees, it'll turn red. So you know that's a fire. It'll be color gradient so you can tell. That's a really useful tool. Very cool. Unfortunately, this is another thing you have to carry and grab. <laughs> and that green dot in the center, wherever you point that, that's where the temperature nice. reading on the side is. Oh, yeah, I can see it. No, that's cool. This was smoking heat. I'd, I'd be, uh, I'd be getting pretty paranoid. Yeah. yeah, me too. You start throwing furniture in the mix, and you don't know where you are, and you get stuck under a coffee table or uh, behind a couch very easily. Definitely, uh, it's almost like you need goggles like this, right, built right into your thing, right? They do make. I'm sure, they're working on them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they do, but they're not very. Uh, you know, the bullet came out with that. The evolution. The evolution. But it wasn't a. Uh, you can get disoriented real quick with the helmet on. Yeah, you almost like you want to have like yeah. be able to look like bifocals or something, you right. know. Deputy Witty want them all. That would be beautiful. Really, really uh, very cool. No, I won't. Yep. Yeah. I won't let you get. Oh, watch the line right there. Yep, thank you. Watch the hole. Yeah, watch the hole. Stay to the right. Stay to the right, perfect. Perfect. Very cool. Part of just. You know what I mean? Have a pair where you're going looking normal. And right. You drop down the road where you're ready to see helmets rather than carrying that. But that's the thing that, that was awkward. You carry the tool, you carry the hose. You know what I mean? You can get the more you can pick the real smoke that not actually knowing where you're going and in your That's what I'm saying. You just bring the drop down. You want to see normal and then you very easily yeah. and start looking wrong. Yeah, that's why we're gonna go here. I look forward to 
Yeah. 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 Oh, 
five-minute airbag class, we're actually going to deploy an airbag. Yeah. Alright, so take off your gear. Yeah. 
again in another year or so. Um, from the feedback seems to be pretty good from walking around the different groups. Uh, so I just want to, you know, thank you guys for doing that. Um, Chief, I'll, if you got any words, I got him up. Oh, oh, no. I was <laughs> at the right time. I'll go over. What you guys were watching while you were eating, this is actually a drill that we did on our group, uh, the wastewater treatment plant down on uh, down by Home Depot. Um, they approached us, and what it was, they, they've got a double cellar. Some of the areas were 16 to 24 feet deep. And they, they approached us saying, hey, what's going to happen um, if we fall? And yeah, how are we going to get out? And that's how our department stays proactive. Within a week or so, we had done training exercise down there to kind of help them out. A lot of the industry in town is like that. Their they're concern when their workers get injured, trapped, um, how are we going to do it? We did it at the high school uh, about a month ago. We did the same thing. They're working up above the auditorium. The general contractor came to us and said, what happens if we get stuck? So we're, we're being proactive in the community, trying to get out there, try, trying to learn, and just trying to be much more proficient at our jobs. Um, hopefully today, you've seen how much we love our job. Uh, like I said, these guys came off duty, and I was very impressed. We've got guys that volunteered today that have been with us two months, uh, all the way up to, to 30 years. So it really ran out of a 70-man, 75-man department. We had 33 volunteers that came out to show you our tray today. So it was, it was really tremendous. Chief's got a few words. Uh, just briefly, thanks to all of the participants. Um, very, very impressive to watch as an observer, the participants and our some of our younger guys step up and uh, do the instruction. Um, and just thank you. Uh, and basically, it, it, it speaks for itself. Uh, you get a good hands-on feeling of doing the job. Um, I'm sure you'll come back with a lot of positive uh, feedback and comments. Thanks. Thank you. From my perspective, very educational, and I thank everybody that showed up and volunteered. Right. Really, really, really well done and very enlightening. So I appreciate everyone. Great. Right. Thank you. Craig, you got anything? Uh, uh, just again, thanks to everyone for, for doing it. Uh, and if anything comes up where uh, there's anything else you want to know, what else we do, uh, anything like that, don't hesitate to let any of us know if there's something we could do better. We're all ears, you know, and, and like Jeff said, you know, we, we love doing this. I mean, this is, you know, we were going through some of the stuff, and, you know, there were some comments of, you know, I don't, you know, it's kind of what we sit there hoping to, hoping to do. So um, we really like what we do. Uh, we got to see a lot of the equipment, some of the equipment we'd like to go to. Um, so hopefully that down the road everyone understands if you read the paper or they're, you know, <clears throat> hopefully, you know, Putting together some money for us, you know, you're not going to get mad at Councilor Rollins for agreeing to it. Because <laughs> you've seen some of the things that we do. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, so, again, you know, thanks a lot. And if you know of anybody that would like to do something like this, uh, I'm sure we would love to do it again. So, uh, thanks again. As a parting gift, uh, please keep the helmets. They're uh, nice. they're a present from us to you guys. Right. Participate. You you sweated hard in them. We don't want to reuse them. <laughs> <laughs> so you're free to once again thank you for coming. If you the pants, I'll take those too. Oh, and the jacket, uh, and I'll just show up on scene. Any com any comments? Anything that you would like to, well, to see different? Or? I think you guys did a great job. I've been working most of you and you guys, you guys. I think I'm impressed. I thought they saw it all good today. You guys really put your heart and soul into it. Yeah. I think mean, you give me credit. That's right. We see it after. After you've done the job, nobody really sees what you do up front except you guys, you know. To show that to us, and then, like I said, we've been around for a long year. And to show us what you really do, it's impressive to do the job. Very impressive. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right.
We can show you our rescue again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do the slideshow, because there's one photo I've got to discuss. I was going to say, there may be another one on that, that disc. I don't know if you... <coughs> And we might end From up with some MPU. good pictures that we're going to forward to you. Oh, excellent. Hopefully. I would like to be able right, to show them in my class. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.